Well, good evening. This is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on Monday, the 10th of December. And finally, uh, this is a catch up, a breaking news on the uh, riots in France and Paris uh, more specifically. Uh, President Emmanuel Macron has suddenly surfaced and uh, seated at his desk in the palace of all places. Where else would you? Uh, give off your edicts, um, has uh, made some concessions to the people and uh, an admission that he may be in part the problem for um, basically bouncing this on the people without discussing it first. Anyway, I'm going to show you a bunch of slides and um, of the internet here, uh, which are part of his speech and uh, one or two other things connected with the French president. And... Um, Anyway, it seems that nobody knew where Macron was and uh, he left his uh, Prime Minister to deal with the whole thing. And uh, it was even a read of a story that he was uh, talking about uh, asking his Prime Minister to resign uh, to take the can for all of this. Uh, it's amazing how weak these people are. Anyway, let's take a little look at these slides and uh, then we'll come back and uh, I'll sum up and say cheerio. Here we go. OK, here we are. Macron bows to protesters' demands and says, I know I have hurt some of you. President takes emergency measures to placate gilets jaunes, but refuses to reinstate wealth tax. Oh, how interesting. Emmanuel Macron has bowed to pressure from the street to announce a catalogue of emergency measures aimed at pacifying the gilets jaunes after weeks of civil unrest in France. In a long-awaited address on primetime television, the president tried to talk to protesters out of further action, promising a rise in the minimum wage and tax concessions. In a mere culpa, Macron said he had heard and understood protesters' angers and indignation, which he said was deep and in many ways legitimate. Well, you've just admitted that uh, it's been going on for 40 years, and so I think it is legitimate. He admitted that he had not been able to provide solutions quickly enough since his election. I may have given you the impression that this was not my concern and that I had other priorities. I take my share of responsibility. I know I have hurt some of you with my words, he said. The president began his pre-recorded 13-minute declaration saying the past few weeks of protests had profoundly troubled the nation and that legitimate demands had led to a series of unacceptable violence. He said the anger went back 40 years, but he added no anger justifies attacking a police officer, a gendarme or damaging a shop or public building. When violence is unleashed, freedom ends. Uh, well, who was throwing the tear gas, Mr. Macron? Who was throwing the tear gas? Who had all the shields and the helmets, uh, the little black wall of death that you sent out on your public? Uh, the lesson on climate policy. President Emmanuel Macron is showing that the failing to engage with the public invited the mass protests across the country. A woman walks past graffiti reading Tax World Champion on Champs-Élysées Avenue in Paris on November 25th after protests against rising fuel prices. Energy transitions are about people. The protests happening in France send that signal loud and clear. If green policies are seen to be unjust or to be worsening inequality, they will not be accepted regardless of a government's good intentions. Are you listening there, uh, Justin Trudeau? Well, you pin back your ears and you listen good and hard because your people are talking to you too. The government of President Emmanuel Macron violated two important principles of what is known as a just energy transition. They failed to engage in social dialogue and they failed to formulate concrete benefits of the reform for those who are less privileged. CBS News, Macron breaks silence on violent French protests, promising tax relief. Macron declared an economic and social state of emergency, ordering the government and parliament to take immediate steps to change tax rules and other policies that hit the wallets of working class French people. He responded to several of the protesters' demands, promising measures including a government funded 100 euro increase in the minimum wage starting at the beginning of the new year, abolition of taxes on overtime pay in 2019 asking profit-making companies to give workers tax-free year-end bonuses, slashing a tax hike on small pensions, acknowledging it was unjust, or you just figured out that you were manual, 
I take my share of responsibility for the anger gripping France, Macron said, an unusual admission for a president accused of being out of touch. I might have hurt people with my words. However, the centrist leader insisted the protesters' malaise is as old as he is. 40 years and, and coincides with France struggling in recent decades to keep up with globalization. And here he is. Look at this. Is this not pomp and circumstance? Is this not a guy who is completely out of touch with reality? Why would you sit at a desk like that and try and tell ordinary people that you are an ordinary person? And of course, how does this play out? Significant majority of French support anti-Macron movement despite of violent protests. Following some of the worst riots seen in Paris in decades, the vast majority of French people still support the goal of Gilets jaunes, yellow vests. A survey of 1,016 people conducted by the polling firm Harris has revealed that even after the riots that saw cars and buildings burned on the Champs-Élysées, 72% of respondents said they still support the movement. The figures are not dissimilar with polls taken in the aftermath of the first protests on November the 17th, which saw nowhere near the same levels of violence, but did see one death from a car speeding into a crowd of protesters. So there you go. So as you can see, uh, this is too little, too late. Uh, I do not think this is going to save Macron. Uh, I think that, um, you know, uh, when we realize that the carbon tax was actually just a trigger mechanism, uh, it's only a part of the problem, and even Macron himself um, uh, admits we're, we're looking at 40 years of build-up of this. And, I, I mean, I find it absolutely amazing that he would say something like this. You know, well, if you've been watching this for 40 years, could you not realize... Did you not realize that you're maybe making a bit of a mistake uh, by taxing your pensioners who are on a meager income as it is? You, you know what I find interesting about these people? And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about Emmanuel Macron or Anthony Weiner or Harv Weinstein. Uh, whenever they get caught, whenever they get caught with their fingers in a till or sexting or doing some completely bizarre thing that no normal person would do they're immediately going into rehab they're going for uh, counseling and you know damn well every single one of us knows damn well that if they hadn't have been caught there is no way they would have been within miles of any kind of counseling or rehab because quite honestly these elites don't think that they have a problem they think we're the problem funny that isn't it Anyway, I'll let you digest all this information and uh, get on with the next video and we'll talk very soon. So this is Hound Dog Steve signing off. Please, thank you so much for joining me this evening and uh, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe below and uh, click that big red button. It really helps when you do and uh, we will talk real soon. See you now. Bye.